குட் மார்னிங் சார் குட் மார்னிங் சாமுதாச்சாரி சாமுதாச்சாரி யுவர் பெட் ஸ்டூடெண்ட் ஆமாம் யுவர் அவர் குரு தேங்க் யூ வெரி மச் கைடு அண்ட் மென்டர் ஐயோ அதெல்லாம் சொல்லாதீயா I am your friend. I am your friend. Yeah, of course. An elderly friend. We are friends. We are very thick um. friends actually. Um. Now it is my turn to question you for a change. Yes, sir. I was on the other side always. Now mm. you are on the side where we have to question you. Yes. In fact, I have been given some more questions by your good friend, our good friend. I hope you so won't give me marks for my answers. I will not give you. Great. <laughs> 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 you give one of the questions. Briefly, yeah. would like to know your uh, <coughs> experience before you joined IIT Madras. Before I joined IIT Madras, actually I got my engineering degree from IIT Kharagpur. I belonged to the first batch of IIT Kharagpur, 1951 to 55, B.Tech, honours it was called. My degree is still a B.Tech honours degree. So, 51 IIT Kharagpur started and it so happened that I was in Calcutta in those days after my intermediate and uh, we just applied and I got through because in those days if you get a good first class in intermediate you could join any college in India any profession more or less if that is if you got 65% or nearly nearing 70% in intermediate you could walk into any any university in, the, in all over india you could walk in almost without much difficulty it was very easy to get into the university studies in those days nowadays of course it has become difficult the you get 95.5 95.2 and things like that so it's difficult so i joined iit kharagpur and iit kharagpur was just being built up like when you joined iit madras it was being built up so similarly iit kharagpur was being built up but we were in the same in the in a jail the political jail hijli jail it is called where the british used to keep the political prisoners in kharagpur hijli kharagpur so we had our classes there and there was a huge hangar there with a workshop and the workshop was full of uh, the arab the world war 2 reparations machines all the german machines index machines and things like that all mechanically automated machines basically not the computer control machines but mechanical control machines tak 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 all cam control right so we used to work on that and then we used to make drawings and uh, we had uh, hostels which had no flooring at that time and there was no window to shut so when the monsoon came rain would come in but then of course within a few months everything got through and the first batch was we were on 80 students so that's how the iit system started so excuse me what were you doing before that i was born in a small village in north malabar a place called payoli where later after my birth long after that pt usha was also born so <laughs> i have that distinction of being born in the same place where pt usha was born so i had my primary education in payoli and then i had my high school in is a town a little north of payoli where my mama was staying so i didn't finish schooling there i because by that time i my parents got shifted to calcutta so i went to calcutta joined the south indian school and finished my school there then after uh, matriculation in calcutta in 1948 i joined the sensivius college for my intermediate science and then uh, after the intermediate science i i got admission to a, a sipur the bengal engineering college in sipur but then uh, i was a little underweight so they said they would not select me sipur paper soon mills is there famous huh? sipur paper mills or something is sipur pur paper mills not sir. there sipur is near the botanical gardens in uh, calcutta on the howrah side and the bengal engineering college one of the older old engineering college something like the our anna university here and thing like that gindi college bengal engineering college is also an old college i got admission there but then since i was under weight i was a very puny fellow in those days and not that i am very tall now but at least i am <laughs> normal so they would not admit me so i continued one year bsc and by that time the iit kharagpur came up and then 
my parents also suggested why don't I join there. So I got into IIT Kharagpur. So after 4, 55 I passed out and in those days like uh, the present days, you know, people like to go to after just a degree, you go to America for MS. In those days it was uh, fashion, in, at least in the Calcutta side area, uh, to apply to some German company and they would take you as a trainee. <coughs> it was very easy to get into a German firm as a trainee. They would give you some 300, 400 marks per month, which was good in those days. And they would look after you and then after one or two years, they would even give you an employment. Germany, which firm did you go to? I went to a crane making company called Yuho, Cheha Yuho in Dortmund, where we mentioned about Dortmund. So I stayed there for a while. This in the Ruhrgebiet, am I right? Pardon? Ruhrgebiet, they call Ruhr, it. Ruhrgebiet. So there I was in the drawing office for uh, two years or so. Then after that I shifted to another crane company, a bigger one called Krupp's company in North, on the North Sea area, Wilhelmshaven, Krupp Adult. They used also used to make cranes. So I was working there and at that time our old professor R.A. Krauss, Robert Krauss from IIT Kharagpur, he had become the, the, the German official in charge for IIT Madras scheme. And uh, we had contact with him, some four or five of us from the IIT Kharagpur. And so he wrote to all of us, Professor M.S. Thakur is coming to board for an interview. You all come down, better come down and uh, it's a good chance for you to get a job in IIT <laughs> Madras. So we all went to interview there and then uh, we naturally we got easily selected. Sir, excuse me. Yes. When you were studying in Kharagpur, he yes. was a teacher there. His famous name in mechanisms. Did he? He used to teach mechanisms. But of course, he didn't teach mechanisms directly. For mechanisms and all that, we had one professor, Nanjundesh, Nanjund, Nanjundaya or something. So, he used to teach us. But he used to, Professor Krauss, he built up the institute, basically, IIT Kharagpur. Apart from the government side, because he brought in other German professors and things like that. Professor Krauss, he had a sort of a fatherly figure. We used to call him Papa Krauss, basically. Because uh, and, uh, Professor Krauss, the unfortunate thing is that he lost his son in the war. And uh, the Mrs. Krauss and uh, Mr. Professor Krauss, they were in China, in a college sponsored by Germany. And then after that, they joined IIT, IIT Kharagpur. They were actually employees of IIT, the Indian government. It was not under the aid or something. Because IIT Kharagpur had a UNESCO aid, if I'm not mistaken, and the UN that some, some English, some UK based uh, scheme. And we got a lot of these old machines from the, the, the Second World War reparation. And all these were big use for our workshop training. When you were selected in Germany, who were the other people who were selected with you and came With me, I, we were selected, uh, basically in my batch, it, we were selected. We had one Dr. T. Ramachandran, if you remember. He was not IIT Kharagpur or something. Mithlarji, you remember Thonangam at Ramachandran? We called Thu. Ah, Thu. Kerala, Thu. Ah, uh -huh. So he was already a doctoring there and he was selected also in the first batch. He was working in... Uh, Klaus Thal University. He taught us physical metallurgy. Ah, yes. He's a very good man, personally. And uh, he's, of course, three, four years older to me. Then uh, another man was selected, but then he left in between. Then along with me, my Who class, I forget his name. He's not from IIT also, Kharagpur. He didn't join IIT also. He didn't come. Masur was... <coughs> Mike, from my batch, three others joined, two others joined. One was uh, Swam Shankar Das Gupta and uh, one uh, Subodh Majumdar. These two were my classmates and one Sarajan Sur was the second batch. Basically, Sur and myself, we were in machine design area, Daskopta was in physical metallurgy and uh, things like that. And uh, I think Majumdar went over to hydro turbo machines. He taught us. I met this gentleman in uh, Dusseldorf in the expo. In I see. 1973 and 74. Oh. He was in the Indian Export Council or something. He was the Indian Engineering Export Council, Mojumdar. Yeah. So, so we all come, came back in 61. I joined. Sur and I came back. I think uh, Das Gupta came a little later. 
he taught us metallurgy same metallurgy huh. physical metallurgy he used to teach metal forming and things like that i think then uh, we were of course in the msb we had an office there and we used to teach uh, the first batch and second batch also we sure and i have taught to machine design and uh, at least my good student tell me that we were popular so <laughs> using his room yeah. i was permanently using his room or my drawing design yeah. i was my elective so yeah. he was my guide for the uh, design so yeah, i used to use your room. in fact at yeah. times i call it your room or my room i was yeah. spending a lot of time in the room using the drafting board we didn't have facility like today today but they were very nice that's where uh, yeah. your, your role of helping us as a real guide you are so then uh, th- basically what i felt that the, of course then we had some uh, problems with the, the first batch the, the the young people like that we had some problems with the administration also because we were a little anti administration there was a group anti administration and pro administration and a middle group and things like that and some of us were in the anti administration group and we were not very happy with these things there and uh, since uh, our background was from the industry we could go back to industry any time we wanted and so in the, when my bond of 3 years was over i left iit madras in 64 you know this we also left at that time ah uh, sure also sure left a little later and others left a little little later so i left immediately after 3 years and then uh, joined a company in uh, in in hogli district rishra again a crane maker they used to make something Uh, electric hoist so i joined there and in between i acquired a wife called mallika parmeshwaran and uh, how did you get married with so i got married in uh, coimbatore raja street 1965 Six, 1965 and then from all the way from coimbatore i took her to rishra which is a very small town far away from kolkata then uh, she how got used to the Bengal semi urban life not fully urban life but semi urban life in Nirshira and we spent 6 months there and somehow i was not happy with the with the steel it was a sort of a marwadi managed company nothing against marwadis but they are good because they have contributed a lot for the industrialization and business uh, progress of india but they have their own peculiarities uh, as if you are A straightforward engineer is very difficult to work for a Marwadi. That's my <laughs> my experience in those days. Nowadays, of course, many Marwadi companies are very good. Birla is one of them, and things like that. So, and uh, so I. It so happened that in '65 I got a. I tried with KCP Madras for a job. This they wanted some design man. So I joined KCP Madras in 1965. after exposing my wife to 6 months of kolkata life she got used to kolkata also very easily in those days and 65 from 65 onwards i was in uh, uh, kcp and then i used to come to iit once in a while doing some inter- the the project examination and thing viva was and things like that and then so happened professor naranuthi asked me one day when do you come back to I told Naranmurthy once in a while that I am trying to leave KCP because the, my young blood. <coughs> young blood, I was not happy with the way KCP was also doing and so I wanted a change. So Professor Naranmurthy said, why don't you come back to IIT? We are looking for somebody who knows cranes and things like that. So, and uh, we have now a full-fledged lab for that. Professor Bechtloff was there. so then uh, the app admission they came and then i applied and then the, this i was selected when i was selected i told them that i am on paper i am only a btech honors but i would like to register for my phd directly without uh, you people ask me to do an mtech only then i will join then uh, professor ramachandran was good enough to say that yes yes you have been uh, iit madras training in germany so it can be connect because i was one year in a during that time i was in the technical university of hanover hanover so basically i had undergone classes there and But i was you taught in iit madras is it huh it is before you taught no before i taught during my training 
That two years in Germany, the last two years in Germany was the IIT Madras scheme. Of that scheme, one year I spent in the, the Technical University of Hanover with the laboratory of uh, mechanical handling, cranes, conveyors and all that they used to make. And I used to, we used to attend, Suran, Suro was also there, we used to attend the classes for all machine design, mechanical handling and related subjects. So basically IIT Madras told, yes, yes, that can be considered as a post-graduation, we'll allow you to register for a PhD. Because otherwise I knew that once I don't have a PhD, I will be again kicked off from the IIT Madras. So basically I registered for a PhD under Professor Dharanamurthy and then slowly worked and worked and worked and it took a long time to get my PhD. 1955 I graduated, got my B.Tech, 1975 I got my PhD. And with my PhD, I became a professor here. Uh, so when you become a professor in IIT, in my opinion, it's a very, very, very attractive job to be a professor in an IIT because you have nobody to question you. Except, of course, the people like Amudachari and students. <laughs> huh? and, and if you keep away from the political part of the whole system, then uh, you are happy because you can do your work and if you get one or two projects here and there, you are happy to do your work. The students are good, students will. So basically it is good to work in there. And, uh, but I must honestly tell you that when I was in IIT also, after my, even after my professorship, uh, KCP called me to be a consultant for them. I used to go every Saturday, actually it started in 68 itself. Just after I left, in a few months' time, they asked me to help them with some design work in, in pneumatic conveying and general machine design. So I started going every Saturday once in a while to them. So I'm one of the earliest consultant from the IIT Madras staff to the industry before it, the whole thing was even regularized. We had a system whereby I used to I did not even give even a single paisa to the institute at those days, although the, it was official. But then the ICSR came and then uh, the, we had to give some share of the earnings to IIT Madras. But it went off. It went on till from 68 to almost uh, 78. Almost 9, 10 years I used to go almost every Saturday to there. And it so happened that Professor V. Ramamurthy, late V. Ramamurthy, you must be knowing him. Yeah. He was also in KCP when I was in KCP. And he had joined IIT Madras before I joined IIT Madras. So, after Second stint, not the first stint. First stint you joined Machelia. Okay. First stint you were in IIT Madras. Yeah, yeah. It's a second, second stint. He joined in between before I rejoined. So, KCP, he was also basically interested in design area and uh, vibrations and things like that. So, KCP, Ramurthy and I used to go almost every Saturday to w spend a day there in uh, KCP and help them around. So, that was a good experience because I kept contact with the industry for a time, for a long time. So, then uh, once in a while I would get a little un up, unhappy with the thing and I would say that to tell my wife that let us try somewhere else. So I did try once or two places and then offer was not. Then once the offer comes, I will sit down and we will compare what is happening. I said, no, no, this is good life because IIT Madras, beautiful campus. <laughs> Children are happily studying in the central school and um, the madam is happy with the society here. I am happy with the thing. I could, there is no tension. And uh, the, once you make the comparison between the, the advantage of the life-based advantages and the monetary advantages, it, the monetary advantages were not as that, all that attractive. Because in those days, uh, even now, basically, because I have continuous contact with the industry, even now the designer in the industry is not paid very well. The manager gets a hype paid. But that manager doesn't know how to design a machine. He knows how to manage a project and get other people work. 
And if the other people make a technical mistake, my experience is that, that very few are able to correct that mistake. Then uh, we settled for IIT Madras, we happily settled there, children grew up, then they flew away. Then 1994 I retired, and when I retired, just when I was retiring, I had a, I was already helping a small company making planetary gearboxes in Hosur. And uh, these people came to me and then uh, I started helping them to make the planetary gearboxes. Planetary gearboxes because I had an experience in making, there was a ISRO requirement for a 14 meter antenna. A, with antenna that rotating, this uh, with azimuth and rotation and the elevation rotation. And ISRO came to IIT Madras for the design. And uh, the structural engineering lab took the structural design of the lab. Then Professor Narasimhan of electrical engineering, he took the dish design, that is the, the wave form and the, the dish form. No? And they were looking for, they said, we have, there are two, some f three gearbox, two gearboxes there which are we to make. They are planetary gearboxes. Nowadays they are being imported. Can IIT Madras help us? Then uh, we said, I can help you. Then uh, basically that's how I got into the gearbox designs, planetary gearbox design. So we made the planetary gearboxes for that antenna. And antenna gearboxes are very special because they have to have very low backlash. They have to have very good accuracy. They have to have very high rigidity because they are servo controlled. So basically, we des I designed that and then ISRO came again for another antenna also, we designed the antenna. So basically, structural lab and our lab, we used to do the design for, I think we have done for two or three antenna projects for the Indian uh, space research in those days. So basically, I had got interested into uh, the gearbox design. Although my design area of experience for gearbox was Peripheral, in the, in the olden days, I became more interested in the design of gearboxes. So this company came and said, sir, we want to help in making planetary gearboxes. So I, and he said... For whom? For MagTorq Private Limited, a small company, which had started in Hosur. And uh, when he came, uh, he, I used to help him for two years. And then he said, now you're retiring. What's your project, your proposal after retirement? He said, I'm looking for, I'll settle down somewhere and maybe help the industry for do something. Then uh, he said, we are making gearbox, you're helping us, so why don't you come to Hosur and uh, Bangalore or Hosur and then uh, help us make gearboxes. So, and in those days I had three options to settle, settle down after the uh, both my wife and I had decided that Madras is not a place for us because after having lived in this beautiful campus and peaceful campus for a long time, whenever we go out, we become a little nervous about the city because the city traffic was going on increasing and the city life is getting difficult. So we said we should go to a place where it's a little more peaceful and we have some people around us, relatives. Children have flown away. So... We had two or three options. One option was Vishakhapatnam, where my parents had been living for after my, my father had retired and settled there because my eldest sister had settled there. So we had some connections from my side of the family in Vishakhapatnam. Then uh, the next was Coimbatore, where my wife's family has some connect, family connections, relatives so that we have relatives to support us in the old age. And Bangalore, where also we had some relations, and uh, my sister-in-law was there, her sister, her elder sister was there. So, and Bangalore is a good place to settle down. It's a sort of neither Vishakhapatnam and in not the... the Are the, you in Bangalore or in Osur? We started in Bangalore. I was staying in Bangalore. We have bought a flat in Bangalore for, and stayed there for three years, and I used to go to Osur five days a week, 
Uh, travel was tough thing from home. So that, uh, that in those days it was tough. Uh, the traffic was not bad, but the roads were bad. This is, I'm talking of 94, 90, 94 to 97. The traffic was slowly got on increasing, increasing like that. So we said going up and down, and my eyes were getting bad because I developed a glaucoma in my eyes, and then I could not uh, see well in the dark for a, to start with. Now I don't see in the light time also very well. So driving um, said, uh, my wife said, you're going up and down is not good. We also decided. And uh, Bangalore was also getting more and more congested. It's uh, difficult to live in Bangalore actually. It's a very, very congested city. And I think that in some ways Madras is better. So we shifted to Hosur and uh, let out the flat for some time. And then finally we sold the flat and we decided to get back to Coimbatore. When was that? That was in 2003, we got a house in Coimbatore and uh, we shifted to Coimbatore. But the company said, no, no, you cannot go away from us like that, so you have to continue helping us. So I said, okay, we'll, my eyes are getting bad and all that thing, so if you want, I'll help you once in a while. He said, fine. So I used to, we used to spend 15 days in uh, Bangalore, 15 days, 15 days in Osur, 15 days in uh, Coimbatore. I still help them with the all design things because the company was growing up and we had a tie up with uh, not only ISRO, all, almost all the ISRO gearbox are now made by this company. That's one thing I should tell because you. Because of you? Because of me means because of me and the company, because the company makes the machine according to what I told them, no? There are many companies who do not make a thing as per you specify. You write some tolerance, you write some material, etc., the shortcut, and then the management uh, sort of, uh, they, they overrule you, no? The designer is overruled by the management quite a lot. So that way the company is very faithful to the uh, design. So we had made a name and uh, uh, the Larson and Tubro in Bombay, they are into defense. And defense people also need uh, gearboxes for servo control gearboxes for their gun systems and things like that. Because the, the, the servo gearboxes need to be compact, rigid, low backlash or zero backlash and things like that. And uh, we had a good connection with, uh, we still have the good connection with uh, Larson and Tubro in Bombay. And almost all their gearboxes are made by this company. So I used to spend two weeks in uh, Hosur, two weeks in Coimbatore. We'll go up and down. Where do you live in Coimbatore now? Coimbatore, we live in uh, Ramanathapuram. Of course, now since about four or six months, we are not going to Coimbatore, Hosur also. So the company still says, no, 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 you should. So the, they still phone me up, they give me emails and things like that. So we still have connections with the company. The man who started the company is also old now, so he has gone back to his uh, <coughs> place in Palagad area. He's got a farm there, so he's become more of a farmer. Although as a managing director, he still continues the, he has got the controlling hand. His children are running the company. I still help them technically, so. When you were the joined in 1861. Yeah. You used to have some German professor like Dr. Scheer, Dr. Coit. We had, uh, yeah. What is your experience with them and how do you feel those days with this German process vis-a-vis -vis the Indian... Uh, no, in my experience with German process in those days was not very... I didn't have much contact with them except that uh, Mr. Ebert, of course... Workshop used to... Uh, workshop, because uh, we had connected with the workshop, so Mr. Ebert, we used to interact a little. And there was one, Hassan Bain. Hassan Bain. Right? He was also in the workshop. We used to have contact with them, but it was not very close because nothing was designed. But Dr. <coughs> Cloyd used to take class in machine design. Dr. Kurtgen, uh, actually, when we came, Kurtgen start, stopped taking machine I design see. class. I think Sur and I took the classes, yes. right? Yes. If you remember? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Sur and I took their classes. So Kurtgen was still just managing, and I think Kurtgen also left. Early. Did they like the Indian <coughs> experience, these Germans? 
I don't know, so many of them I think liked. I know Cher used to like. And uh, Kurgan, we don't know. Kurgan, he went away and he was a happy man. He was a pilot? He was, he was a war a fighter pilot. So Kurgan's one experience, I can tell you, it was very nice. We once went to some function in, uh, in a hotel or something, some formal function. And Dr. Kurgan wore a tie and he wore a chapel. And then he will have he had a German car. So he will, with the car, he will drive with the, he will steer with the thing and he will put his hand here and he will go on driving and he will go on hooping and braking and all that thing. Then he will say it is very easy to drive in India, you know, if you have got a good brake and a good horn, you can drive very easily in India. So he was, uh, he had that fighter pilot reflexes, no, basically. He was basically a good man. We do, our connection with him was not very close in those days. And Dr. Sher, of course, we were not very close because I told you, you know, three years I was there, I left. So. Then when I came back, Dr. Bexloff was there and... Uh, was Professor Hau... First, first term he was there. <coughs> Professor Hau was not there. I think Professor Hau came also Hau was later. Teaching vibrations. Huh. Actually, Hau was teaching vibrations. But our connections in, with the vibrations people, etc., was less because, if, as you say, we were in that MSV one room there, and we were more interested in teaching design and setting up some things. And, and Stahl was also there during your period. Stahl was in the IC engine lab. IC engine lab. And uh, Koch was there. Nicholas Klein was there. In fact, Klein was very big actually. <coughs> Hmm. Klein means small in German, hmm. whereas he was a very big person. Am I right? You used to call him small. No, no, Zelagowski was the biggest man. Yeah. So we used to call he him small came. big Klein. <laughs> Klein means in yeah. German small. Yeah, small. He was very big actually. Yeah. And Nicholas Klein was, I think, uh, more in the humanities, no? Yes. Yeah, German. Yeah. He used to t t t he used teach Deutsch. German. Uh, nah, right. And Nicholas Klein had much exposure to India, even before. He knew a lot about India. Because many Germans, especially in the humanity area, they usually are fascinated by the Indian philosophy and the Indian culture. culture and things like that. So they have a good knowledge of these things and Klein was one of them. What's your view about the students of your days and later, first, first time and then later? Or? Student of my days, I don't know. I can, that way I know students variety from 1951 onwards, right? I, then ah. you are a student. Ah. As a teacher, so, when we were students and when we joined our salary, we could expect up to 250 rupees a month. Assistant engineer somewhere, as I, uh, as I was telling our friend Mamata, this KC Pujari, Krishna Chandra Pujari, he joined uh, the Orissa Electricity Board, I think, at 250 rupees, assistant engineer. So, uh, it was good. Assistant engineer in the government, it was good in those days. And uh, if you otherwise, you may get anywhere up to 150, 200 rupees or something like that. And, and some of my friends had also joined the Hindu Motors, which is in the Kolkata Uttarpada. area. Ah, Uttarpada. And they were, uh, and one of my classmates became the master mechanic, one Bansal, G.C. Girish Chandra Bansal. And they were, and uh, the first uh, gold medalist of the first IIT, one Bhim Chandra Mandal. He also joined, uh, he was mechanical, like our first batch, Tangavelu. gold medalist, uh, mechanical Tangavelu. The first medalist, gold medalist of IIT, Kharagpur was also a mechanical. He was here uh, uh, two, 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 huh. two months back, he yeah. was in Madras. Huh. So Bhim Chandra Mandal joined uh, this, uh, this place, uh, Hind Motors, but then he left for he joined, rejoined uh, the Hindustan Steel and uh, he rose up well there to become a superintendent or something in the design. And I am told uh, he is not all that well now. He is still living. Many of my classmates are no more, <laughs> are passed away. He is, the Bhim Chandramandal seems to be still living. This was the latest news I got. Not very well. You were relation to the IIT student Madras as a teacher and staff. Uh, so then uh, the IIT, we were, we were all happy to get there. Very few of us left for USA in those days. And even from the IIT Madras, very few in the first batch, the first earlier batches left for USA. And 
I think the students, the earlier students were more interested in the engineering content, content of the course than the later students. For the, 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 as the years went by, the students became more interested in getting a high grade GP, GPA and then applying to a university somewhere in the USA, getting an MS there and uh, going off. And uh, in many cases, I found that uh, the, what they did in IIT Madras and what they, st what they studied in um, MS had not very close connections. That I found out. And even here, many of the students who passed out here, they joined the management, MBA in IAM or something like that. They went on selling soap and things like that. So basically, when, uh, I had the impression that the interest of the engineering student in engineering is, was getting more and more diluted. And, and I think that's the condition in India now that basically the bright students look for a good job rather than doing well in the profession, either engineering or physics or chemistry or mathematics or whatever it is. My, because I may be too old now to, as a grandfather I am, getting the grandfather ideas. Oh, no. That way we are yeah. also old. Yeah. We believe drawing is important. We yeah. believe uh, success, all that. Today, maybe the concept is changing. As well. No, that is, that is a structures. But uh, if you still believe that you have to make machines as an engineer, or you have to make a good building as an engineer, or you have to make a good uh, electronic device as an engineer, whatever it is, or uh, do a good uh, good research or a good development in material science or chemical engineering or something. So that that you find in very few people nowadays. I remember very well that uh, we used to counsel for this IIT Madras, the new entries. No, when after the JE, the boys will come here. The children will come here for admission. And a few of professors will sit in a big room and then we'll interview the boys. The boy will be accompanied by their parents sometimes, by their mama sometimes, something. And they will come and sit down and say, ask, what is your grade? He say, you have so much grade. What's your rank? Good rank. Then, uh, what's your interest? And the boy will say, my interest is physics, sir. Then I would tell him that, uh, Oh, yes, you can do the integrated physics in IIT Kanpur or IIT Delhi, they are very good. And because at that time we didn't have the IIT, the integrated in here. So, but then... You had the, IEC Applied Physics and Applied Mass. In uh, Applied Physics in uh, Bombay was there. So we will tell him, but then the father will tell, the father of the mama who is there or the mother who is there will say, no, no, but he is good, he, is, he will do easy. Because they have found out from the rank list that he is eligible for EC. So you should go for EC, you know. So they will say, you should go to EC. There was only one or two people who will say, Sir, I want electric, civil engineering. I said, you got a good rank, why do you want civil engineering? <laughs> because in those days, civil engineering was not very popular. So he said, no, sir, I'm interested in civil engineering and I want to become a civil engineer. So we were happy that we have one student who says that uh, he has developed interest in engineering, one aspect of engineering, and he wants to develop that. So it is very rare to find people like that. So in IIT days, uh, we had a good time here. That uh, counseling was there. Then in IIT, I used to, I, the administrative side I have done, basically I have been a, a review committee chairman for a, a few years, the, all the, staff members in IIT, you know, the, 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 the so-called class two and down staff. We had in the committee interviewed and also the, uh, there were many, many, many temporary appointees who went on for a long time. So we had, uh, IIT was forced to make them permanent at one time. So we used to interview all these people and then give them proper promotion or things like that. So I was a review committee chairman for, uh, I think, uh, for quite a few years when uh, Professor Indiration was the director. You were... Uh, committee of the review committee. You were relationship with other departments, how was it? Relationship with the departments was okay. 
which basically I am I didn't have too many relations basically that way we didn't have too much in, as a colleague yes but uh, in those days research was not a big thing right research is no big where research means you have to do a lot of interaction interdepartmental interdepartmental work in lab wise and things like that otherwise it was not uh, more friendly hostels what every new hostel warden or resident warden i never was a hostel warden my friends were, had become but uh, i never was a hostel one there's a ruby comedy chairman then i was a uh, the president of the <coughs> alumni association for i think two two times uh, basically i think i was and in the first time i think we we sort of revived the 25 years no silver jubilee actually it was started when i was a president there and basu john was there if you remember second batch basu john he was very active <coughs> and we had the silver jubilee reunion I started you were, you were the president i was the vice president you me has been vice president of the and before also have before also, also and after me also so we had uh, we had varadarajan as uh, in the membership b varadarajan no he be the third batch third batch then we had uh, jacob jacob dominic was the first batch he is in us now no not jacob dominic I, he was vc uh, jacob vc jacob mrf but he was my judge sir you were the president i vice president jacob was uh-huh. the uh, secretary secretary ama mrf ama mrf vc jacob ha ah, vc jacob so and then there was one narayanan ghost ghost was there <laughs> ghost was there <coughs> and uh, i think uh, we did well in the our committee we revived the the alumni association from a sort of a sleeping dormant stage to a more active condition and now it has become very very active. very you know it is totally different it is become very, be very difficult one man show or something yeah, notice yeah. and those days it was more or less one man show the president was active and the committee was active it will do well otherwise nothing will be get done it was difficult to get a good committee those days huh? because they all volunteers to come yeah, and yeah, spend yeah. time and infrastructure said it it's all totally different now it is that way alumni association has grown mm. very big now then i was in guidance and counseling i was head for i think one or two terms if you have used our thing i don't know if it is still continuing guidance and counseling in mamata you mean by placements you mean no guidance and counseling in it because the as i told you know the the student the attitude to yes. studies changes right and the the student basically who comes to iit in those days many of them had difficulty in adjusting to the student the iit system yes. they would get upset because they come from a college school where they have in the top 5% here they come and they have to be say, at least one of them has to be number one and one has to be the last and uh, the, uh, the the they get uh, disappointed that <coughs> they are not able to score very high marks and uh, worse than that what happens is that at home there is pressure what is this you did uh, so well in the school you were doing a number you were getting rank number one to number two like that now you are somewhere in the middle so the mother will scold the father will scold and all that thing they they were under some sort of psychological pressure and the school system is different from iit system all said and done because in school system i think they get uh, more personal care from the teacher and more uh, instruction whereas in the iit basically in the first year when they come they sit in a large class and uh, they are afraid to ask questions in the class and they are afraid to go and meet the professor or the lecturer after the class so they get a little lost and their marks are not very good so it needs a little readjustment and also some people can't speak english very well and of course i should mention here also that there is that there was said we had some cases where the 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 reservation list no people from the reserved category they had some difficulties again psychologically <coughs> induced either induced themselves or induced by the 
by the in the normal entries and things like that. So they used to feel a little bad because as guide counseling, I have come across these cases where people feel a little diffident and uh, they are not very happy with the system. They get they get into moods and things like that. They keep away from their friends. They feel they are being targeted. So we had the guidance and counseling had some small groups of st uh, student uh, volunteers and we had some staff volunteers, our faculty members and uh, we used to organize and we used to the student members would uh, pinpoint the problem their colleagues who are having some mental problems or something they would report it uh, diplomatically to the faculty member and then slowly we will try to <coughs> call the student and uh, uh, help them around. I would like to mention one case in this case. We had a, a bright boy from the railway colony. He was uh, having some problems. So once we had called him home and we used to talk with him, then we asked him, his parents were staying in Nungamakam, the railway colony. He's son of a railway officer. So we asked him, how often do you go home? He said, sir, I don't go home very much because if I go home, my mother is uh, um, asking me why I'm getting low marks and things like that. So I'm afraid to go home, sir. He used to say, the, the local boy, you know, Madras boy staying in the hostel, he is afraid to go to his own home in uh, Nungamakkam in the weekends because his mother will say, why you got the bad marks? But of course, I think usually they come over it, overcome that, and then they become normal after some time. But few of them are not able to. We have come across people who have cut their... Blade. There was one fellow who cut his uh, wrist with a blade and the reported one Shaji from Trishur. And then we found out that he was interested basically in mathematics. But uh, because of his, his rank in uh, the JE, his parents forced him to do ECE. So we tried telling this boy that EC is also a lot of mathematics, you can do that and then you can branch over to mathematics after your degree. He said, no sir, I want to do mathematics. So we had a lot of problem with him. Then finally we had to call his parents from Trishur and uh, we told him you better take your boy back, put him into some maths course and we found out later that he did the maths, BSc and all that and then he is doing reasonably well, that's what we found out. So we had extreme cases like that. What's your contact the IIT now? Are you still in touch with the IIT? Or? My contact with IIT is not very much now. But with the, your colleagues <coughs> in IIT, professors, Fun? colleagues in IIT, professors, students? Colleagues, students, of course. Amadachari was, uh, we had contact with him, but then Amadachari, somehow we lost the contact. <laughs> After you went to Coimto, yeah. <coughs> we lost the contact. My contact with the Professor Velusami is very still continuing because Velusami is always nearby. Velusami had settled down in. Uh, he became. He joined the Perundra Inch College. So whenever we went to Hosur, we used to stay, visit them, and have some lunch with him and things like that. Then he shifted to Erod. Now he has come back to. Coimbatore. He has taken, he settled in Coimbatore. What are his children doing? Any idea? He has got one, very some has got one son who is in the USA. So that's the problem with all IIT children. They all fly off and then they leave the parents uh, a little lonely. Don't so you think it is a concern for, as a generation as a whole? <coughs> all the elder people stay back and the children go away. Do you f feel it's a problem? It's a problem for the elder people. If you look at it from, as a parent, I look at it that way. And as a as an Indian, I would say that there's something wrong with the whole system of education in this country. Where and the, also the 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 psychological attitude of the educated people in India that education you can do well only if you go to a foreign university and get a degree. And then uh, the foreign university being in USA, 
where it is easy to settle because USA has still got a lot of vacancies and things like that and they have a lot of money and uh, you get a very good salary and they continue there and finally they become citizens, citizens there, they become Americans. Of course the American needs new people so they basically they become. But it's a little sad for, personally as a parent it's a sad for the parent and as a country it's also it's a little sad for the country because the country has at least on paper we have said that we expect a lot from the engineering from the highly the higher education uh, people who get higher education here and all that they don't do any uh, they don't stay back and do research or they don't do any advance here they prefer to go out and do the advanced work brain drain you mean if you can say brain drain but it, I, won't, I don't want to call it brain drain because I think we, all the people in India, we have got still a lot of brains in India. The brain is not being used properly by the Indian system. You were its professor in relation, do you remember he made a famous statement? He is famous for the statement. Hmm. Brain drain is better than brain in the drain, he said. Hmm. Brain drain yeah, yeah. is better than the brain because he said yeah, yeah. The brains are in the drain in India if you are. Hmm. So that way. Yeah. It is a famous quote of Professor Indiration. Do you remember? Uh, he, used to, he used to make some quotes like that. That is true. Sir, you, are, uh, you came here for the Golden Jubilee. We came for... 2009. So that you, you are still in contact with IIT. Nolda, nostalgia. Uh, yeah. No, I mean still in contact with IIT saying that uh, once in a while I had been following up uh, my friend uh, Shanmukham and saying Ayani Apdir Kaya and things like that and I have asked him some one or two technical questions once in a while from Hosur. Right. Yes. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Sir, how could Hosur, your colleagues, Hosur K, Lakshminarayana? Lakshminarayana is no, yeah, but unfortunately, uh, interaction with him. unfortunately people in the, my interaction with Lakshminarayana was good. Because he also is from IIT, correct? He is, he is, I think, five years younger to me. He is related to Suri, am I right? No. He's, I think he is related, related to Suri. Suri he is related to Suri. Suri, Suri. Suri is second batch IIT, Kharagpur. Oh. I think they are cousins, yes, cousins. Suri and uh, Lakshmi Narana. Lakshmi Narana, of course, he is from IIT, Kharagpur. I think he is 19, I am 51 batch. I think he joined in 55 or 56. I think he must have joined in 56 or in 55. He has, I had not met him in there, I met him only here. When did he come to IIT Madras? Who? Lakshmi Narana, he had worked in Godridge after, and I, his thing is that he has done uh, B.Tech in IIT, Kharagpur, he did an M.Tech also with Professor uh, Belgaonkar. Then he joined Godridge in Bombay. He did some design work there and then he came over here to IIT. Madras. Do you remember one Nagabushan, CJ Nagabushan? Uh, and he did a PhD here and Lakshmi Narana is a very academically oriented, very strict academically oriented man. I don't know, you don't know him because yeah, 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 we don't know he's him. after you. He would, yeah. Shanmuga would know him. Yes, yes. He was highly intelligent, very analytical, very good in mathematics, but very exacting with his students and also very exacting with other people. And uh, he had some, a, a little short temper, no? He, and he was a little, a little reticent, no? He was not too, very open. Yeah. He is very selective in his association. Ah, selective in very his selective. associations. With, with yeah. me, he was very close. Close, huh? Now, I also have that opportunity, this, uh, this thing that Lakshmi Rana is one of the very few professors he tolerated. Uh, I am one of the few people at his level whom he tolerated well. And he would uh, listen to me and he would say, Parameshwaran, this is what I think, why don't you propose it in the, in the department meeting? He was. Area was taking care of mechanics. Mechanics. Mechanisms. Mechanisms. Nagabushan was with you, you remember? Nagabushan was here, he was in machine design. But he was there for a short time. Lakshmi Dana continued here for a long time, no? Unfortunately, he passed away when he was still before retirement. In the IIT? Was, in uh, the office, is it? Yeah, yeah. He's a very good, academically very brilliant fellow. 
And do you remember Professor Swami? See Swami, he has uh, some questions for chemistry. you. He wanted chemistry. To come here, chemistry. But he's a good friend of us. Uh-huh. But uh, he wanted to be here, but I believe we cannot yeah, come. Yeah. See Swami, yeah, room. Yes, of course, yes. Uh, some questions for you. But uh-huh. I, all, all that I asked, hmm. like your experience, yeah, how yeah. many people joined along with you, about. Uh, I must tell you that no. some all of my. I asked you. In fact, he has specific questions yeah. for you. Whether I take honors from IIT Madras. Huh? His question. Huh? Because those days everything was honest in IIT Kharagpur. Am I right? And those days, the uh, I... Intech Honours only was... Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the whether he was uh, selected by Dr. Krauss, yeah, which I asked you, I answered yes. Yeah. Uh. Whether he was selected by Professor Krauss to go to Germany. And whether... He not to not go to Germany. Uh, Professor Krauss selected me in Germany. Germany. See, that's what he said. Uh. Then whether he joined IIT 59 and left. No, you didn't join. This I mean, you should... You didn't join 59? No, 59 we didn't. Uh, we were appointed as lecturer only in 61. Then did, uh, then he said... Uh, as we came back. Dr. Gobichand has asked. Uh, Gobichand was here. He was there. In fact, he came earlier to you actually. T. Gobichand. He taught ah, his chemistry, then later on in chemical engineering. Gobichand ah, was in 1959. Ah, Gobichand ah. were the... Vengreshulu was my old teacher. Karakpur, he, came from Karakpur. he taught us fuels in IIT Kharagpur. And Rama Shastri also came from Kharagpur. Rama Shastri taught us me- 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 mathematics, no, chemistry. Yes. In fact, the AES process were Rama Shastri uh-huh. and uh, Srinivasan, maths, uh-huh. SK Srinivasan. Yeah. Then uh, Dr. Ramdesh Urdu. And then uh, MBC Shastri taught us chemistry. Then uh, Professor Nigam taught us uh, mathematics. Maths. Nigam came slightly later. SK Srinivasan yeah. was the uh-huh. first math professor, Dr. Ron was there. But SK Srinivasan is not IIT Karakur, I think. I, I don't think. He was not there in those days. But he was in the... In fact, uh-huh. the IIT first interview panel itself, apart from the Germans, Dr. Hmm. Han Koch hmm. and uh, 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 Srinivasan was there, Ramasasiri was there, Vakrishul uh-huh. was there. Uh-huh. We had a big panel. Those days, no, J.E. was there. Uh-huh. So, at that time, all the three were there. SK Srinivasan... Uh, oh, the first uh, batch of... Selection of us okay. was by uh-huh. interview. Three Germans and yeah, yeah. three Indians. Professor Varghese also was in IIT Kharagpur. Varghese came later actually. Uh. And Narayana Mutti was one of the persons to join early. Yeah, he was one what of the What was the relationship with Narayana Swami as a professor and uh, a guide? How uh, was it? And? Narayana Swami, Narayana Mutti. Uh. He came from, I think, Imperial College. He came College from Institute of Science. He was in Imperial College, I think. And yeah. He, he got came his qualification there. But he got from, he came from Institute of Science, I think. And uh, we were relationship with him as the... He was our professor, then also the director. And he was the head of department, Professor Narayana Swami, uh, Narayana Murthy. He said you are his guide also. He was my... He was guide for many people. Mm-hmm. Because in those days, uh, somebody has to be guide, no? So, he has been guide for many people and... Uh, he's a nominal guide. Many of whom who have worked with him, uh, basically, at least in the earliest... Uh, People who got a PhD from IIT Madras, they have done their work more or less by themselves, without too much uh, professional guidance from the from the nominal guide. And he says, Swami asks you again, do you know Professor Swami? Do you remember Swami? He says, which Swami? C. S. Swami. He is asking question to you. Do you remember? C. S. Swami, I do remember him. Although we are not probably very close. And he said, when did he take his PhD? Who? He, he asks about you. 75. 75. Uh. Who was his guide? He answered, Narana Murthy. Narana Murthy. I asked this because I want to uh. ask the questions yes, as uh. decided by him. Narana Murthy. He is not able to come because his daughter or somebody is not well. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we have got our Shanmugam. He is... moment he knew that uh, mm. you are here, mm. he has come. Sir, you selected me for the position of STA in drawing. Oh, good. 74. Uh. Okay. I remember you are doing PhD. Will you be able to take 20 hours of uh, low drawing work? I said yes. Mm. Then some questions, technical questions. I was good in drawing and I also studied in PhD tech. So I know industrial drawing. Mm. So my first entry, but I didn't continue. <laughs> I left for Bombay. Uh, and came back in India. Oh, oh, yes, yes. You. So you told me yeah. there is a lot of difference in you before going to Bombay after coming. <laughs> <laughs> but Narendra, where did he study with you? Hindi. He studied here, no, Hindi. Hindi. You are, you, you are not in Hindi. I am a Hindi graduate. PhD, he said. 
after the gigli i went to phd for masters so oh. narendra joined this place yeah. for masters continue he is a classmate of narendra oh gigli gigli oh tj oh tj music we know we know narendra narendra Any anecdotes you want to tell us? Hmm? Your anecdotes, experience. Anecdotes? Can tell a good Lakshmi Narayana. <laughs> no, no, Lakshmi Narayana I have told. Easy. Uh-huh. I mean, no, yeah. about that incident. Yes, I am more. That is why I prompted you, sir. But, uh, but I brought in Lakshmi Narayana, knowing that you have some information about. Some. It. No, no, what did? He came to our house so rudely. <laughs> no, no, Lakshmi Narayana was a good friend of mine, and. Uh, we had lot of interaction and shridharana means uh, have the distinction of being one of the few persons with 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 whom he did not become angry is a mechanism person or irritated mechanism people yeah. they all talk about precision like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so is basic you mm. know nature is you know based because yeah, of yeah. that yes very strict He will not allow any deviation. <laughs> yes, yes, that's the thing. That's a that is a strictness with me. Not very flexible. But he is not flexible, yeah. but very selective. Yeah. He knows some people. In fact, he used to interact mm. with me on gears mm. and other yeah. things also. But uh, passed away in '97 or so, if I remember correctly. Ah, oh, he passed away because '97. But Professor Ram Mohan Rao, sir. Ram Mohan Rao. He, he was there. In, uh, he was there. Yeah. Yeah. Any interactions with them? Ramon was um, basically a pleasant person. Basically, yeah, he, he also studied yeah. in Germany. Who? Ramon Rao. No, he went to Germany under this uh, DAD scheme. No. Mm. Hmm. Raidu also went to Germany under the DAD scheme. And you have guided a uh, few people. Who? Like you were guided by Narayan. Huh. You also guided Professor Ram Kotisar Rao. And Madhusudan Rao, if I am correct. Huh. Your student, sir. Yeah. You can recollect something about. He, he was my yeah. first guy. I mean, he would take like a descent. He was me. No, no, no. Ram, very simple. Ram-o-ray. With process, you know, Ram Kotish Rao, two people were guides, and two poles apart. One is process hmm. Parameshwaran, other one is K Lakshmi Narayan. Huh. Oh, okay. I always wondered how, how these two people could really <laughs> guide. Ram Kotish. No, no, because we, uh, Lakshmi Narayan and myself, we tolerate each other very yes. well. You tolerate each other. The kind of work yeah. you know that has come out of that mm-hmm. interaction, yeah. very high level work. Mm-hmm. And he is more practical, Lakshmi yeah. is more yeah. analytical, and Ram Kotish mm-hmm. did a wonderful work. <laughs> you, you may not recollect, but he is. No, he also passed away in 2000. Hobbies. Ram Kotish Narayan. Hobby in my hobby. Hobbies, swimming. Swimming, I used to do swimming in. Oh, uh, swimming. When the uh, when the. I want to tell something about Lakshmi Narayan. Just no, yeah. no lighter day. Nothing much about you at this point. He came to Wild Hill basically <laughs> because yeah, I am yeah, supposed to. Friends, they have high regards for each other. One day morning, he came to my house early in the morning. <laughs> Some six thirty seven like that. <laughs> And my brother-in-law was staying with us at that time. My brother-in-law means uh, my sister-in-law's husband. We are about the same age and uh, we are good friends, basically. And uh, I was not immediately at, uh, there. Actually, when I came into, I was in the C5, C1, C1, C1 five, C5, yeah, C5, 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 third loop road. Lakshmi Narayana comes in the morning and comes through the garage and the open door. Says, Anant, Anant. He calls my son. So. Anantram comes there, and uh, Anant, Lakshmi Narayan shouts at him. See, you were playing with my son, with uh, Sudhakar, uh, yesterday evening, and uh, they, you, when you played the top, you know that throw, throw top was lost. Pambaram was lost. So what is it? You did not find it. You go and search it for you. Very roughly, he is talking with my son. Then my, I was not in the room. My brother-in-law was there, so my brother-in-law got upset because he likes my son also. And he said, "Who is this man coming and shouting at uh, my nephew?" So then I came by that in that time. By the time my brother-in-law, he is also a short-tempered man. This my brother-in-law of mine. 
said, by that time I came into the room, he said, I'll explain now what has happened. Then I told uh, Anant, oh, this has happened. So I, we told uh, both my wife and I told uh, Anant that you go and search for it. Uh, Sudhagar will come and they go and search it. Then Lakshmi and I went away. Then my brother asked, who is this man who comes and shouts at Anand like that? I was almost going to shout back at him. By that time, the, you came and I found that you were very peaceful with him and friendly with him. So I kept quiet, otherwise I would have shouted back at him for shouting at Anand. So he was, uh, Lakshmi Anand was a little strong character that way. Did he complete his PhD before you or after you, sir? Who? Lakshmi Narayana, Kailan. I think he completed a PhD. A theory, yeah. Uh, after, yes, after you I think, after I think maybe after. Because I think after me. By the time uh. when he was about to register, uh. he had 20 publications, yes, international yes. publication. <coughs> but he told me, hmm. in spite of that, I cannot, could not use any one of them for my research. Uh. I have to start afresh. See, that he is very open in admitting mm. certain things. So, he had to start. I think Professor Narayan Muthi was his guide. Ah, Narayan was guide for, for a universal guide in those days. Okay. Because there was no other specialist. No professor in the professor guide, no, in those days. Interestingly, Arjun asked me, mm. the joint department, to do MS and do doctorate here. Huh. What he told me in 64, mm. of course, he addressed me. Go to industry. That, day, that was the philosophy. We believed in engineering, working, drawing, all that. So he said, You go to industry, get the experience, if necessary, qualify later when you are in the job. That's what I did. I did my SQC Masters, or then I went to Germany, all that I did. I took his advice. This is this is advice as a the real guy. That is where he made up, uh, he, he was reason for my, he said, uh, Don't join here. Of course, this is in friend, as a friend, he said, yeah. more than. Uh, Teacher, I should not tell you, but this yeah, is yeah. the best way to go to industry, get a very good experience. No, because in those days it was difficult to get a good job in the industry, no? And uh, I was very lucky that way. <coughs> all companies mm. select me. I should tell you, but a, a child selected me, I went there. Mm. At that time, the IIT um, Aeronautical, they wanted to start there. That gate came from a child. No. So they took me and Tangavero. We uh -huh. both went there. Mm. Some of you want to come to my dad. Ashok Lillian also took us. Ashok was a no, no. Ferra company those days. Britishers were there. They were trying to make the English designs to uh, in Indian and then okay. in India. Uh -huh. So I was in that group. <coughs> so it was, in fact, that we learned a lot. Mm. Yeah. That main advice was by him. Adi Moolam. Adi Moolam was my classmate. Classmate? Eh? Do you know he is no more? Oh, I don't know. I didn't oh. know. Do you know that? Oh. Fact, he said, you go to industry, get experience. You can always get qualification. Adi Mulam also joined the Ashok Lane. He was my batch, that's what I'm telling you. No. He was the same, much senior to you. Because he's my batch. 64, he passed out of Gindi. How do you know? Sir, yeah. I have interaction with all people Lele. from your... Leyland, when I come to Leyland, ah, I was ah, introduced. Ah, ah. Leyland did not because of Gindi. Because he's from Gindi. The year he passed out from IIT, oh. they passed out in... I think passed out in 71, so, but uh, I no way I did it. Did I mean, that is his advice. And uh, at that time, they, we believed in drawing. Uh, we used to spend... No, even now, I, as a design office, I still believe in drawing, because since I am in connection with uh, the industry for since my retirement, more closely than before, I find that um, detail design in India is um, neglected fully. Mm. And uh, people talk of big things that some people will come and say, we know design, we know computer design, sir. So what do you know? I know... Uh, I know Cadia, I know Proe, I know... Solidworks. But no, that is design for them. That is not design. Huh. <laughs> no, we had design class means we design, we had to do calculations. We were asking about that. Those days didn't have the computers. So mechanical... Oh, when you say this, I tell you one experience in IIT itself. I basically introduced a new course called <coughs> Design Practice. I don't know, you remember? Yes, yes, yes. yes. For the B Tech. It was going on for a long time. Gopinath was there. Uh -huh. He was doing it. And uh, we started this as an elective for the third year. Third year. Third year level. Third year level for mechanicals. 
and to start no to start with they made it was sort of compulsory it was sort of tutorial 3 hours continuously the boys would be given separate to batches of 3 and they would be given yeah, this is apart from those four drawing courses it was not drawing at all no, no. this ah. is apart from this this yeah, is yeah. drawing <coughs> this was the, some exposure to design Additional. is there ah. they they we had we will give them some mechanical object to be designed which is not taught in the class something like automobile clutch a scissor lift a a a luggage trolley in the airport and things like that we would give and we would give them some basic things how to approach it and we will say that either you design your own thing or you uh, take some information from others and um, take a design take an uh, drawing with a layout which is available and then work on it and this went on for i think one or two courses after which all mechanical sets are to serve we are not learning anything like that so we don't want this course many of the students i see so we made it elective so when we made it elective only about 20 25 students would come or the 80 students one fourth of the class but these students were interested because they knew that they could they want to work with the to make things you know so this was more interesting and it went on and gopinath also he continued it we used to give them basic material automobile clutch means we would give them a cut out the section drawing of an automobile clutch with the in description we would give them some information about how to design a friction clutch because they are not exposed to all these things we would design them about springs and all these things we would give them then uh, they would do in a special projects you have done uh, which you can remember projects we did one very good project uh, uh, for dense phase pneumatic conveying it was a department of science and technology project which we did and it went it successful we uh, had one one ms student abhijit tatwadai abhijit abhijit tatwadai no he was uh, working on that and uh, he brought it to working stage and all that thing and after that we did one or two mtech projects also on that we collected a lot of information on dense phase pneumatic conveying in which the the powder is not dispersed in the air but it is more goes as a block like thing you know so we that was a good project we had done as a dst project otherwise projects basically i told you the two or three antenna projects design projects which we did for isro and for which we went through a lot of uh, design review with the isro people and all that thing otherwise in those days projects were not very big but any department of handling i think was it to map i don't know can can, can i say this Pan? because the department itself uh. mechanical handling was more or less uh, associated with map I mean, no that was beckloff was there no beckloff when he left then we had to continue it so the mtech we started the mtech course and basically my 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 design specialization is cranes and conveyors from the industry as well as the german training and here so basically but that's a subject which is now losing popularity in the industry also there are very few companies in india who make uh, good cranes and conveyors you made arrange a very big seminar in material handling in the, one of those your your care time no actually i did uh, organize also not material handling i did organize uh, two design conferences i don't know shanmugam i remember nakom huh? nakom no before nakom uh, we integrate with nakom later okay before that i don't know huh. but uh, Nakom one I attend uh, uh, I would say in 80s Nakom was uh, as one of this one right. of the sponsors also Nakom was 80 1980 uh. in IIT Bombay No no we did it in IIT Madras uh, in we did two design conferences for which one for which once we had this uh, this uh, professor Gadge no from HL he came to inaugurate and uh, we had lot of papers on practical design from the industry also a lot of people and the the cii the the cia people the mm. indian industries people they collaborated 
with us. And uh, it went off well. We had a lot of people from the industry who came and presented some papers. It went for two years. Then uh, the NACOM, the Association for Machines and Mechanism, they took over this thing and they had been continuing every two years, I think, some mm. design conferences. Any mm. suggestion from you for improving the systems here? System improving, I don't know. System, basically, it's, it depends on the industry also. Means, an engineering institution, <coughs> physics, chemistry, mathematics, an engineering institution cannot develop uh, by itself. It has to develop depending on the industry. The industry must demand from things from the institution and the institution must demand from the industry. That does not happen here. That is one uh, big major problem. The but industry, there is industry does a lot of uh, foreign know-how, no. That is the main difficulty is that we do not develop the hardware. And basically, as a mechanical engineer, I would say that hardware, mechanical engineering is hardware. If you make a robot, you have to make the hardware of the robot in addition to the controls part, in addition, and the controls part is again hardware from the electrical side and the electronic side and the software part. The Indian uh, robotic engineer tends to specialize on the software part only. That's how why we are not able to make uh, robots like the Japanese, which play football and <laughs> which, which uh, will bring a drink for you from the fridge and things like that, no? We have to make those things. Otherwise, there's no meaning in just writing software, there's no meaning. The software must be applied to a hardware and uh, the hardware must be made by here. Then only people will be employed. Especially the, the worker has to be employed, no? The mechanic has to be employed, the machines must be employed. Now industries, in fact, they are changing from men to machines, all robots now. Actually. Yeah, but who makes the robot? Robot you have to make here, not import them. If you make the robot here, no problem. That's what Japan does, no? If you buy a robot and um, ask it to uh, turn out so many parts uh, an hour, that's not uh, mechanical engineering, that is production only. Simple production, production management. You get the machine from Japan, you, Germany, you get the robot from uh, Japan, and you, and you write the software, and then you say, I'm a big engineer. And no, you're not an engineer. You're a software man. If the machine goes wrong, robot goes wrong, you don't know what to do with it. You call the Japanese fellow or the German fellow, right? Sure, sure. Huh? You have to make it yourself. And if you make it yourself, the employment get, uh, potentiality of the country will improve vastly. Isn't it, Right, sir. Uh. 100% correct. You, in, uh. fact, in fact, yes, sir. <laughs> maybe it is the thought of the old, old people like us. No, no, no. Uh. Even now it is valid. No, the idea no, is, it is. <coughs> how many, as he rightly says, how many boys today, uh. they want to do drawing, they do want to go to workshops. We had a, a, no, it don't, uh, Amadajari, the thing is, it's not just, you don't blame the boys only. Blame the industry. The blame the environment. Blame the industry. I told you, you know, we interact with LNT a lot. Over these last almost 20 years or so, I've been interacting with the LNT. LNT Bova is supposed to be very good in mechanical engineering. They are good. I do agree. But they are not good in detailed design. They will give you a solid model of a thing, which they, which they have made. And then uh, they ask us to develop the design. Uh, so from this small screw and washer onwards to the to the linkages or the gearbox, etc., we have to develop. That those people are not able to develop. They will say the gearbox must be so much, some uh, 300 dia, 400 long. Output shaft so much, input shaft so much, finished. Gear ratio so much. They are not able to make the gearbox. And I can tell you, gears is a very most simple thing to be to be designed, as probably Shanmugam will agree. It's a most complicated uh, huh. thing, from geometry to design to manufacturing huh. and measure inspection. Yeah. If normally we say, if one knows how to really design a gear, hmm. manufacturing, inspection, he can do anything. <laughs> and coming to Ashokalanta thing like that, India still does not make a good IC engine. 
imported. A good IC engine with low fuel consumption is imported. And if Ashok Leyland and Mahindra etc. claim that our engine is low consumption etc. it is because their imported design is efficient. Not because their design is efficient. Do you agree? Absolutely, yes. Ah. So if you can develop an engine here, nothing like that. Make it yourself. That nobody is thinking about it. LCA, they want to develop the engine, gas turbine research in the, this thing. I, mean, I have interacted with the GTRE for some time from Hosur because they wanted some high speed gearbox and things like that. So, the G GTRE, they have been trying to develop a gas turbine for the LCA. Nothing. They still get it from Rolls Royce or whatever it is, no? Arjun tank, they wanted a 1500 HP diesel engine. Institute of Science wanted to develop or something like that. It was dropped in the, in the middle. With our background in the engineering and with our background of science and the engineering science, we should be able to develop a good IC engine here. An IC engine is different from a gearbox, Shanmuga. Yes. Because gearbox I can still calculate and make. I can still measure it and check the accuracies. But IC engine to say that so much kill, it is so, so much the fuel consumption is so much, it requires fuel. A gearbox does not require that much fuel. There is a difference in that. Do you agree? <laughs> huh? IC engine requires feel for the engine. You have to do, do something here, like the auto mechanic, no? The auto mechanic will say that he will do, just do something and t tell you 100 rupees. So he will say, why 100 rupees? He will say that 10 rupees for this part and 90 rupees for my, my know-how. Because he <laughs> did the proper titling there. Yeah. That patience the Indian industry lacks. Patience and confidence, self-confidence, no? The Indian industry lacks fully. I know people from the industry like LNT. I know people, I, we interact with the Tata Engineering. They come up with big things, they develop this, develop that. But then they start behaving, they, behave, they talk to you as a machine supplier. They'll say, if you design, they will say, sir, we'll give you a thing like this. But we don't guarantee what exactly. No, no. If it doesn't perform, penalty class. Now, first time you are making a new thing, a penalty class has no meaning. Ilya. Yeah. So that attitude to engineering must change in the industry. Then they come, slowly they come, the institutions will follow. Ashok Leland and Mahindra, etc., Tata, they should come to the colleges, to universities, to do basic research. That's what people in Europe do, people in America does. USA does not make machines in the universities, unlike the Europe. Europe, they get more into the machine details. America does not. But America does a lot of basic research in, uh, which is necessary for developing the hardware. A lot of research they do. We only talk research, research, but nothing happens. We did one project for DST, no, I told you long back. Now I think things have changed for the better. In the good old days, the DST man will say, uh, you have not submitted this report. Sir, we are still working on it, sir. No, no, this is time that this uh, timeline is over. You submit something and submit so that I can close the file. Finished. He, he is more interested in closing the file. Not in seeing it what we have done. So why should I get interested in the thing? I will close my fi his file and put in my report, annual report that I have done this DST project. I have done that DST project. And the institute will be happy, right? This is his usual, his original color. Huh? <laughs> How he talks. Huh? We have to change our attitude to work. I think our psychology has been changed by the, I go back to our nationalism, no? The British have changed our psychology. 
the british people have made the indian educated class feel a little lose their self confidence or they become fearful of doing a mistake you know you go to the famous yeah. macaulay designed the system of education in india macaulay spoiled the system to kill the huh? indian guru that is the truth that's the truth that's what they say ah. that's what you're telling me the english patient no one teriyade ha tamil la patient on teriyade hindi la patient on teriyade and nowadays students are engineering graduates come for interview from the colleges the other colleges no they we ask them questions in we are a small company so we don't call from iit or nit or anna university and things like that so from some local rural college they will come we will start off in english sir then that fellow does not understand well then uh, we will ask in th- then he cannot answer back in english is it tamil la pesriya yes sir so tamil la we ask questions in tamil then simple mechanical questions most of them do not answer properly a few of them very rarely maybe one or two out of 10 have understood the subject they will answer to it good in tamil what they have understood and they have understood the principles that's the type of people you should have not people who talk in english and explain it but if they are able to explain it in their own tongue it's good because what is matter is you have to understand the thing rather than express it and over time you will start expressing i went when i went to germany i didn't know german but in 3 years time i picked up german speaking i could read german books so that is system they they make you ah. learn in fact they say on the ah. system you go yeah without knowing german you cannot no no i didn't go to a german school also there unlike you when you went you went to the school no yeah in fact you were, you were trained in india ah. both institute then i then didn't the language i didn't have any language course i just straight away went and joined the uh, company there and uh, when i joined no german then we started making drawings there i used to make drawings for almost 6 months i used to make only drawings the good old fashioned way on keyboard with t scale and on the drawing machine then uh, slowly then they said oh you fellow you know english no so now you they put me onto projects which were uh, english projects english uh, american based projects no so i would write out of uh, all their calculations in english and all that thing so i used to do that then slowly i picked up the language i used to read the books in english in german then i picked up i could speak in german not 100% grammatically correct but the standard german nobody will question me without looking at my color they would not know whether i am a german or not speaking to doys i have forgotten so i think we should say how we are saying how we are saying